I can I can remember that I planted them on Monday. Never forget. I'll never forget. And I am proud of it. Want the nature to be to be in balance. Because even Wangari Mother said that nature, nature when you destroy the nature is unforgiving. Now we don't want the nature to be unforgiving to the generation to come. I was hearing many rural women complain about the fact that they did not have firewood. They were also complaining that they did not have enough water. Why not plant trees? I asked the women. And so they just started very, very, very small, very, very small. And before too long, they started showing each other. It was now communities empowering each other to plant trees for their own needs. When the women started, nobody was bothering them because nobody took them seriously. You know, who takes women seriously? Then the government realized that we were organizing women. So they started interfering with our organizing. We want to debase your womanhood. So I said, now don't give me that. Just use the anatomy that matters right now. And that is from the neck up. She was disobedient at a time when disobedience was not tolerated. A lot of our people were imprisoned. A lot of our people were killed. for a better government. If you're going to shed blood because of our land, we will. Nehete, Hina now made a gimono, Gekordo, Jacada, Jetikate, Mado de Mary Gua, Kanakotana. It is the people who must save the environment. It's the people who must make their leaders change. So we must stand up for what we believe in. Have we transplanted any trees? Yes. Have we transplanted any? Yes. From the nursery? Yes. Where are they now? Are we of this equal height with the trees that we planted? No. Eh? No. Who is taller? Is it the tree or you? The trees. Eh, you'll be visiting this, this school after you have joined Egerton University. You'll be coming to this school to show us your tree. You bring your children here also. <laughs> eh? And one time you tell them, I planted this tree. tree. Oh, the club. Very good. It a bit somebody's understanding. So you and the teachers, we are working together with our visitors. I planted in, in, in April. This year? Yes. Oh. 
I can, rem I can remember that I planted them on Monday. Never forget. I'll never forget. And I am proud of it. I'm the one who takes care of it. I normally irrigate it and sometimes we weed it. Uh, we named this forest after, after our teacher, Mr. Oko, and where we were earlier, we named it after Mr. Eru. Uh, this is the envi environmental group, and we are very happy because each one of these boys and girls have planted these trees. They have their own tree, and they have been taking care of these trees. As a school, we are very happy because uh, these trees have made a home for us. When we want to counsel these boys and girls, we come here, they also talk to us, we discuss so many things about our school, and we don't get tired. The trees have made us very good carpet, the, the grass carpet, and so we don't fear sitting on it, and uh, we, we like the environment the air is very fresh and we are sure that this has made us proud as a school. This is a club that we like so much and from maybe our girl here, you will hear what we are doing in this environmental club. My name is Onyango Fani Sakini. I'm a member of the club. We, we normally plant the trees to freshen the air around the school. They also make the school compound look beautiful. They also prevent soil erosion that can be caused by wind or even the, when it rains, the moving water can also cause erosion. When the teachers want to give us guidance and counseling, we normally come down here. The trees are also teaching these children to be careful. They take care of these trees. They don't pray around with the trees. And so we see that these children are gaining something from another virtue of taking care of something when it is tender until when it is grown, especially in the environment. And even at home, we tell them that you should take care of trees. They gain that one from the way they take care of these trees in the school. We can keep our environment clean and tidy so that it can be, it can be beautiful. We normally learn a lot from the trees. We also learn what the trees require for their growth. We sometimes do activities like irrigating the trees, weeding the trees to make them grow. Our dream is to have a nice forest, a park, a nice park. Also, in, in our syllabus, we have learned about recycling and reusing. When they collect plastic cans, they use them for planting flowers. Normally, convince the other children by telling them on, the, on how to, to make the environment clean, because we normally teach them on the environmental pollution and, the, and their effects. They not to burn charcoal. Charcoal lead to the destruction of uh, ozone layer, ozone layer, because it contains carbon dioxide. We want the nature to be to be in balance, because even Wangari Mother said that nature, nature, when you destroy the nature, is unforgiving. Now we don't want the nature to be unforgiving to the generation to come. Wow. So. Uh, how about your parents? Do you talk with your parents about all this, what you're doing in the club? Yeah. Our parents support us by giving us 50 shillings to buy a card, a member card. Whenever we are asked for money, for example, to buy cards, they normally give, give us. Also, there was a place where there was soil up there. There was a place where there was soil, then the club planted, planted grass. So, so that stop erosion. This is a place where, like years back, it was like soilish, like there. Now 
the club decided to, to plan girls to stop elution. My friend will explain better. This one, even that one, this one, those one. That you have made. Yes, that one. Right. Yes. We, we, norm we normally take care of these areas by, for example, when the grass grows taller, we normally come with slashes, then slash in order to avoid the breeding. Those beautiful flowers that we planted last term. You look around before planting the grass, was was wind and soil. And the, the, the place was looking brown, like this, mm -hmm. yeah. So when we plant the, the grass, it was, so, was, so, was now appreciative and, and look beautiful. Mm. Yes. This uh, nursery was established in the 1980s with funding from, uh, the, from CEDA and uh, the university. At that time, Egerton was still a college, and uh, it has been used mainly for teaching and extension, where we engage students in uh, natural resource management and related disciplines for training in the use of uh, multi-purpose trees and shrubs, for improved ag agronomic uh, practices on farms. but. Uh, this mandate has now changed and we are uh, using the nursery for mainly for extension and also for creating awareness on uh, education for sustainable development. As you can see uh, in the background, there are students uh, doing various practices like watering the seedlings, uh, cleaning the nursery grounds and making sure that the place is uh, habitable. Yeah, these are Kishia species. They are Kisha and Floya. So, but when there's rain, you just don't water like all the time. You water once in a week or something like that. But if there's no rain and the, and the shade is a bit dull, you just water like three times a day. In this nursery, we have also decided to recycle our, our soil so that we don't cause a lot of disturbance where we collect the soil from the nurseries for the nursery and uh, these heaps you can see over there is what we have recycled within the nursery where we collect all our leaf droppings, our litter and put them in the heaps, they decompose and uh, we use that now as our medium for growing the seedlings. It is uh, a way of also reducing the cost. Depending on the day, like in this place, the, the shade is not enough, so you have to water like twice a day, in the morning and in the evening. You can't water during uh, lunchtime, noon, because the water will be easily absorbed. Uh, together with APA insurance, we went to Ngongongeri, a farm nearby this school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we planted a lot of, it was 2,000 seedlings we planted, yeah. So we do like community, we do together with the communities around. But actually now we have a project of establishing a tree nursery in two primary schools yeah, around this place so that you can, at least when you want to go and plant it, Another in the field down there, we have the seedlings. We don't depend on others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is more economically. Yeah. I come from the slopes of the, of, of the Abadeas. Okay, there we also have the Abadea ranges there, where we, we, we have trees. That's where I, I developed that enthusiasm for for forestry. Also, forestry, it's it's a uh, it's a way of reducing poverty. You know, Kenya is third world country. And through forest, I think we can reduce poverty. Mm. Mm. At the moment, it's at three percent, 
and you want to gain the nine, the ten percent. So through establishing this mm. three nursery and uh, forestation and reforestation, you can able to achieve that ten percent sure. of Kenya sure. as a forest. Yeah. The indigenous may talk may take longer time, but this mature faster. The aim here is to to restore the environmental. Okay, to improve the the carbon sink. You know. Because of the climate change, also that's a, that's also an issue. Yeah, like the place I'm coming from, it's a asal area, mm -hmm. so I want to go and establish a forest there so that the rain, yeah, the rain to to yeah to bring rain there. I mean, it's so dry, so when I plant trees, I guess it will bring some rain, and that's my core objective. Actually, my object, uh, my goal. I really want to make that place good to look like this place you get on. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and I love to work with NGO mm -hmm. and to get to know other places, not only in Kenya, East Africa, and even around the world. And uh, we are establishing nurseries with schools, church organizations. We are uh, uh, also encouraging uh, women groups to adopt this this practice so that uh, they can also get some income from uh, the raising of seedlings. RC Mao Ecosystem Complex was launched in 2009 October when stakeholders in this area came together to discuss about the Mao complex which was facing extinction because of human encroachment. We partner with the neighboring schools in uh, spreading the gospel of the need to conserve the environment. We were located this land by the government to rehabilitate this because people had moved in and cleared the forest. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But now the government has come in and it's encouraging people to move away and rehabilitate this, replant the trees. Each participant planted a tree or two and they were supposed to adopt that. We supplied the seedlings and we participated in a joint planting. After this, each pupil was assigned a tree that he or she was supposed to adopt and make sure that it survives. This one shows our vice chancellor participating in the tree planting. Normally, when we have an environmental week, it's launched by our vice chancellors. So this gives also our students motivation when they see that the, the highest authority is involved in the tree planting activity. This one, we did it at the beginning of this year, around March. Within our faculty, we have members of staff who have done a lot of research on the Mao Forest. So we found that that was a good opportunity to, to talk to the people. We participated in a joint planting activity, planting activity with another secondary school neighboring our institution here. Each student comes from his or her own home. So if we pass the message of planting trees, they will go back to their homes and do the same. Yeah? So this is the, the principal of that secondary school. He planted his own tree. It is important that the principal also participate in this exercise because it gives a good example to the students. When they see their principal, you see he's in a suit, but he had to, 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 to kneel down and plant the tree. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then we agreed that even the principal is going to adopt that tree and ensure that it survives. Then this is the deputy principal of the same school, a lady. So it also gave a good example to the lady students that it's not a taboo because in Africa some time back, there are some cultures which do not allow women to plant trees because they say it's a taboo. Now, after we had given them an environmental talk, each student took at least 10 seedlings to plant because the, the school is a small school, doesn't the population is not that large. So we thought that if each one takes 10 and adopts those 10, then the number of trees planted will be large, they are big enough, yeah? And I think will have played a bigger role. This is the local administrator, the chief, the local chief, who also joined us in the exercise. He planted this tree so that it gives that support from the government side. When the villagers see that the chief is participating, then they will not allow the animals to come and graze over and destroy the plants. Parent, uh, the chairman of the Parent Teachers Association of the school, yeah, he also participated and he planted this tree. The deputy head teacher of the same school, she's a lady also. So 
she participated also before we did the talk. She was talking about the need to conserve the environment and how these trees, once they grow up, the ones we planted, are going to help them in managing the environment. Yeah. Yes, sir, our principal. Oh, yeah. okay. Hello, how, how are, are you? you sir? Fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm Ken Gitoga. Ken Gitoga. Yeah, yeah. uh, these are our visitors from Denmark. Right. Uh, they have come here to take some view. Right. Uh, this, since the Botanic Garden is not for Egypt alone, yes. Yes, uh, they have seen, you have seen also, it is for the public, it's other true. institutions true. to come at the land. Yes. Uh, they, since you have come, they have you had already mentioned yeah. about what we do with this garden okay. so they are requesting if they you can continue the activity just allowed here all right. and they take uh, a short snap right. they are to appear all right. 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 <laughs> so you just continue <laughs> that's, that's, that's great <laughs> thank you thank you it's Mentino and prunus uh, mm. it's, it's treatment for cancer okay and um we realize it's also handiwood, oh. and this one is also handiwood. Mutero. Mutero, it's also handiwood. Muiria, muiria. For what? For... I remember we were being advised to people you'd be taking soup with... For, for, for men. Prostate. <laughs> prostate, yeah. Prostate, prostate grand. Is it also eaten by goats? <laughs> and, and this tree, traditionally in, 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 in African traditions, it has a lot of significance. Uh, our communities used to go and worship where this tree was, and um, and um, um, ceremonies, particularly Meru community, where I come from, mm -hmm. ceremonies were done where Mugumo tree is. Uh, the main purpose of this garden is to conserve uh, plants, especially the layer and the medicinal plants. And the other one is uh, for teaching and research uh, activities. And uh, finally, we use it as for Asia. People who just want to come for a picnic, walk aloud, and uh, observe the plants and animals and the birds which are here. We are also now in the process of producing some semi-processed drugs, which we have in our laboratories now. This tree, we call it Lapanea melanoflores, is a very potent tree in uh, controlling uh, roundworms, tapeworms, in both human and livestock. We got this information from uh, the local people, and uh, then we got that indigenous knowledge that we came now to verify in the laboratories. So when uh, we gave the animals we found that uh, they could be the one that had already been infested with worms. The worms were removed from the alimentary canal. So we, it's a plant that we decided that we should conserve. This is the tree nursery that we have in the Botanic Garden, where we put the plant that we have collected from different parts of the country from uh, different regions. We are also very particular that we bring only the plant that can uh, survive in this uh, altitude. So the essence of planting trees with school kids is to enable them know when they are still young the nature and the advantages of environmental protection. These are one of our officials. She was teaching us on how we're going to plant these trees. This is just before we, we planted like 500 seedlings. A month after we left that place, the Kenya Commercial Bank also joined the school. They planted 1,500 seedlings. A month, immediately a month after we left that school, another NGO, You Hope for Africa, planted 700 seedlings. Then the Ministry of the Youth Affairs also planted 700 seedlings. So the currently the school is boasting of 4,000 seedlings. The educational process as well, right? It's not just yeah, it's not just planting tree. Uh, setting tree. Yeah, when we go there, we get the pupils. We talk to them. We learn from each other. We tell them the advantages of keep it nurturing these trees. So even if we leave, they know these things belongs to them. And you remember Lorette Mangari Madai, the environmentalist died. We also commemorated her. So we have a corner where we always, every, each and every year, we go plant trees in the corner. Welcome.
welcome to Mkorombozi Tree Nursery. It's a community-based uh, organization, nursery that uh, is, has been established to aid in the establishment and rehabilitation of uh, Mao complex. It is a, a nursery that is run by community members who have come together with a common purpose of uh, increasing tree cover in the Mao. The ladies mainly work in the nursery as the men go out and collect some seedlings out in the, in the wildings in the, in the forest, which they use to uh, enrich their collections. Tuko na furaha kubwa kabisa kuona university vile wame tuletea wageni kutoka inchi za ije kuja kushikana nasi wakati huu. Kwa hivyo sisi tunafuraha zaidi kuja kuona nasari yetu. Hii ni nasari habayo inajurikana sana hapa maunarok na diyo tunafanyia kazi juu ya upandaji wa miti ya, ya miche kupereka forest hata katika mashamba yetu. Hii miti ni nzuri zaidi katika mbao tena maganda yake sisi hutumia kupikia chai ni vizu, eh, ni dawa ya kutengeneza tumbo kwa hivyo tena hii ni nzuri sana tena haiharibu shamba iko rutuba ya kutosha na tena hii miche tunatumia kwa upikaji wa shakura hii miti tunaita mkeo na hii mkeo ni mzuri zaidi tena kwa mbao. Sisi hutoa mbao. Hii hutoa makaa. Hii miti. Tena tunatoa kamba inaweza saidia mama kubebea kitu kaba yake. We have partnered with communities for biodiversity conservation as well as Egerton University and uh, we are interested in uh, species that are rare and endangered. In this nursery, we are uh, 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 promoting the, the growing of Prunus africana. So this species is in indigenous and endemic to Africa. And we are fearing that in the near future, we may lose the species completely if we do not take uh, conservation uh, measures. And that is why we are partnering with communities where it grows naturally so that they can propagate it, plant it on their farms, so that we can have a, a, an exit to gene bank for these particular species. Mm. Similarly, we have um, the Hagenia abyssinica, which is uh, rare. It has been overexploited for timber production. It has very good quality timber. Its common name is rosewood. It has uh, hardwood which is uh, very good for furniture and uh, panels in uh, uh, palaces. Hii naitua Mugaita na hii miti ni mzuri zaidi kwa kutegeneza hile viumbo inategeneza kwa ya bau. Ikiwa ni unaweza tegeneza kijiko ya kutumia shakura ya kufakua shakura hii hutoka kwa hii mti hii ni mti savi zaidi tena matunda yake huwa ni dawa kwa hivyo hiyo ni kitu tunafurahia sana university yetu kuja karibu nasi tunaona tuko na usaidizi mkubwa zaidi hata watoto wetu watafaidika zaidi zaidi wakati watakuwa kwa hivyo sisi tunafurahia university yetu na maendele hivyo hivyo nanyi muwasaidie ili tuweze kuwa pamo pamoja nanyi tutengeneze hewa yetu eh hiyo ndio tunataka zaidi tuwe pamoja oh oh amburi ya gutua omodo ili maine ili maine haya kaharugogo kaharugogo hii naita mutamayo tena hii inakuwa katika forest kwa hivyo inaendelea ni mzuri hii naye ndio tunaita mwiri ile kama nilivyoeleza hii ni dawa 
sasa inaendelea tu na inaendelea katika forest ndio hiyo hii sinda vile inavyo sasa endelea sasa hii imekuwa sasa kabisa sababu sasa inaendelea kwenda bere kabisa na ndio unaona iko na green ya kutosha mm. sasa sababu sasa imetosheka mm. vile vile inaendelea sasa hii isipoharibika sasa itaendelea sasa kwenda bere zaidi na ndio hiyo mnaona mm. no tree <laughs> sasa kama hii hii ni ile zilizo ungua ikakataa kukua na kwa barafu oh that eh sasa hii imekufa the frozen eh sababu ya hiyo barafu mm. Mm. sasa hiyo imekuisha kabisa sasa ila ni kurudisha ingine mm -hmm. sasa unaona sinda vile sasa inaendelea sasa hii haikuungua na barafu hii inaendelea sasa hii haitakufa tena hasa hii kitu inaendelea kabisa mm. how big will it be eh? how big eh? how tall tall yeah sasa hii iko sasa hii inaonekana iko futi mbili unusu two and a half uh, eh yeah. how Has... tall will it be eh how tall will it be 40 meters eh yeah. 40 meters 40 meters eh yeah, 40 meters Okay, eh. Yeah. Sasa hiyo. Uh, the river you see down here is uh, Njoro River. Uh, it starts all the way from the Mau Forest at an altitude of 2887 meters above sea level. Where we are is around 2220 meters above sea level and this is the Igatoni bridge. At Igatoni bridge this is a place that has witnessed a lot of pollution. We have identified problems for every section of the river and the problems are not all the same because when you see the first 10 kilometers it's where the the farthest source of this river. We only need to plant trees and offer watering troughs and this can be achieved within one year. Mm -hmm. The next phase, this is uh, the forest, where other tributaries uh, come and join this river. There we only need trees. Objective is to achieve 4% forest cover this year from tree. And this is what we are doing. Already we have planted more than 100,000 tree seedlings, indigenous, along a stretch of 12 kilometers. We community leaders and uh, all community in, in at large and Rua chapter, Njoro chapter, we are very happy to work closely with the Egerton University to facilitate our river. It is the only life river here flowing to Lake Naikuru to see that we are having more clean water from upstream down to the lake. You will find so many life, livestock in the water, drinking this water, livestock in the wildlife in Nakuru living for this water, they take and consume dirty water. And some of us do that fight. Donkeys, sometimes, they are very, 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 very dirty things. And you find them in the water, trying to do what they are doing now. Even yeah, even urinating in the water. Mm -hmm. Even even throwing some cow dungs in the water. Mm -hmm. Even cows do take water here. Mm -hmm. You may find some tractors and pickups being washed in here and you can't say a thing. So it is really difficult for us by such activities. We have planted those trees all over. But you can see this sheep here, when they come to drink water, they eat our trees. Mm -hmm. University have fenced this place here. You will find some of them. You will find some of them coming to cut the, the, the wire, crouching into the into the riparian area. Hmm? I'm saying that the community could benefit a lot if the project could go on and uh, build some troughs, water troughs, alongside the the, the drinking place, so that uh, the livestock have their own place to drink and they don't go uh, datifying 
the water that everybody will then downstream want to draw and make use of. This is called the Mushroom and Spirulina Project Research Project, Masinde Molino University of Science and Technology. It is funded by the university, uh, and we run the project here. We process spirulina. We grow and process spirulina for uh, value addition and give it out for consumption humans. So this is where we do the Mushroom and Spirulina Research Project. From here, the technology is transferred to the community for utilization or for use. Uh, we have lagoons here. This is the growing area. The other four are uh, for seed, we call them seed banks. Uh, those seed banks uh, we process and make spirulina as pure and then bring it to grow here effectively. So basically um, here the temperature, the screen that is around you is basically to control the droppings to ensure that nothing drops other than the spirulina. So it controls it from the external environment so that we are sure that whatever is growing here is actually spirulina and nothing more. As you can see, they are doing the mixing, making sure that the salt is completely within the whole system. It is only also creating an environment for spirulina. Another thing is that you can see they are also doing the, uh, in case of some, some uh, other foreign uh, materials on top. So once spirulina has been grown, it is being harvested here. And once it is harvested, we squeeze it out in strands. What he's doing is, is squeezing out extra amount of water so as to remain with um, uh, pure spirulina with less, as less water as possible. This will give opportunity for him to be able to squeeze out and form strands on the screen using a polythene. Which Once spirulina has been harvested, it is put to dry. The strands are formed so as to increase the surface area for drying. And it is dried inside this dryer mainly to protect them from being contaminated by the external environment, droppings and insects, and also uh, to have enough heat that takes off the water from them. I think I will taste one for you. It's ready for consumption here, as I said. Yeah. This machine is a motor that is grinding spirulina into a powder. Uh, so the powder that comes out is what now we actually pack to produce. We either pack it in capsules or just use the powder to spread on food once it is produced in that form. The concrete projects that have been uh, tested at the university uh, at the technological developmental level are among other things the spirulina that has been brought here uh, which is being done at this center and the mushroom project which is now spread and being utilized by the community in the community we have the community leader who is in charge of the community undertaking the production or farming of mushroom within this is a mushroom production area in which they do plant mushroom inside this house. We have the mushroom, as you can see, that has germinated and is ready for harvesting. Now mushroom, it depends on water. So that after harvesting, the first round you have to 
to spray, you spray using the hand spray, not the big one. Using the hand spray with a very minimal type of water so that it makes it to come to generate well. Then as you look at this one, this one is ready for harvesting and ready for use. You can now uh, harvest, the way, this is the way we, we harvest mushroom. We do like this. This is how it look like. Then we cut with a knife, then we pack. Even the one you saw at most, they were coming from this house. This us producing to them. Then they try to make the additional value. Then if there is already a red meat, they just uh, we just sell it to the direct consumer who normally just cook it the way it is. We have other people who don't want to use the the tried one, so we use the the, the fresh. Then we, we we pack. You can harvest. Uh, we harvest three times a week. This is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Like this house, we are harvesting. 2,500 per day. So within a week, you can get, you are getting 7,500. If you multiply by four, you get, you are, you are employed. So what we are also trying to advocate is the new coming new generation, they should not look for employment. Let them look for what they can sustain their life, self-reliance. This is what we are doing. Once harvested, it's brought here for drying. Um, it's drying. It's dried again here. In this case, it is dried basically to keep it to have it uh, have a longer shelf life. This is going to improve on its shelf life. It can be kept for long and also be sold and be utilized over a long period of time. So the spirulina has to be ground first into powder then the powder undergoes extraction so you put a bit of it and soak in a solvent so we use methanol for soaking so you add some solvent and you shake and leave it to stand for some time you shake and leave it to stand to soak for like 24 hours after which filtration is done. Then after filtration, we go to concentrate the sample. Samples are taken for analysis to determine the chemical constituents present in the sample. The sample is uh, drawn and injected into the instrument, the HPLC instrument. And then now the sample which is analyzed and we get the final results from the computer. Final nutritional constituents of uh, spirulina include protein. Um, based on 10 grams, it includes protein at 6.4 grams, and the phylloquinone vitamin K. This forms part of the reason why spirulina is valued as a superfood. Having been identified with those components, has also been found to be very good in HIV and AIDS because those nutrients mentioned, that is the vitamin A, vitamin K, are very critical when it comes to uh, strengthening immunity. Okay, I'm Paris Awinja. I'm 27 years old. I'm living HIV positive. I know my status 2010. I was bedridden, so I got the sisters, they come here to share with me. So, my CD4 count was 34. I started direct for ARVs, drugs. I'm okay? Very good. It's good. <laughs> Just continue. It's okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Since 2010, I'm facing a lot of challenges because I told my husband I got this and this, but she refused to accept. So I'm just living here, but I'm facing a lot of challenges. Sometimes the doctor advises we use five meals per day, but the situation not forces 
I use two meals morning and evening hours. Two meals. And you see how the way is in this place. My parents depend on me. And I'm just like this. So I face a lot of challenges in life. Okay, to me, yes, I know my status, but uh, I haven't been bedridden. But after going through on what Sprolina does, apart from helping the people who are HIV positive, I decided to use it because it treats many diseases, not only the people who are HIV positive. Boosting immunity system, yeah, you can be healthy, but your immunity is low. Mm. So if you take it, it boosts your immunity. How many of you want to come to Egerton? Yeah, how many? Egerton is the best university in this country. If you are not aware, you are a model school for us. We want to bring other schools here to see what environmental management can do. And we are going to start a nursery so that you can be able to produce seedlings and supply to other schools. And uh, you will not give them for free. You will have to sell at a small cost so that you can be able to buy your books here, you can buy pencils, you can buy chalk so that you can become self-reliant. It is only through hard work. There is no luck in passing exams. It is sheer hard work and hard work pays. So I want to see some important people in this Kenyan society come from this class. I will live long to see that. I have that feeling. So from this group, I want to see environmentalists, I want to see engineers, I want to see architects, I want to see politicians, and all that it takes to make a society. Thank you very much.